In this video, we're gonna get into the real meat and potatoes of what this series is about, which is face tools. So we're gonna to start with Kevin. We're gonna get him set up. We're gonna send him over to ZBrush with face tools, the face tools plugin. And then we're going to make a unique creature. Again, that's our base. And then we're going to do bespoke facial shapes, which is again, moving around our subdivision level one to get dial in the exact shapes we want. And we're also gonna make custom expression wrinkles to really make exactly the type of character expressive wrinkles that we want, the exact shapes that we want, the exact base that we want, all for the head of our unique character. So to do that, I'm gonna go in here to the content tab. We're going to scroll up until we see the actor section. If you're just starting out, uh, you can just, again, go to actor, character, double click CC4 Kevin. In our case, we're going to not save what we're working on and just hit replace all. So we've already discussed all the things about expression wrinkles in the previous video. So we already know uh, Kevin, good looking guy, has really great expression wrinkles, and I'm gonna use that to our advantage, the character that we're gonna make. Now you can see he has an expression dialed in, that's because you know we have this still activated. I'm gonna go ahead and say, click on this neutral expression. And again, if you're not already zoomed in, you can click J on your keyboard or go up here to the camera section and choose face. And you'll notice just looking at Kevin, uh, one of the downsides are, you know, it's it's a human being and humans aren't completely symmetrical. I'm certainly not looking at my scan data. And you'll see that uh, the first thing we notice is Kevin's left eye is a little bit lower than his uh, right eye. So, which is totally fine. You don't want a completely symmetrical character. However, we're gonna be sculpting in ZBrush and I like to save a little bit of time by sculpting in symmetry first. So I'm gonna start Kevin out by being symmetrical. So to do that, I'm gonna go in here to scene, make sure Kevin's top, very top node is selected. There's other stuff in here, but just make sure that top node is selected. Go into that first tab, which is our modify panel attribute tab. Scroll down until you see edit mesh. Go ahead and click that button. And in fact, we'll go ahead and zoom out here. Uh, let's go in here to motion pose. We'll switch to that relaxed A pose because that's what we're gonna send over to ZBrush to sculpt on. And down here under mirror copy, you can mirror all the verts on, the, on his right to his left or vice versa. I'm just gonna click this first button so that all of the verts on the left side of his body are the same as the right side verts. However, when I zoom in here, let's go ahead and go out of edit mesh by clicking that button. You're gonna see that did fix, you know, he is symmetrical now, but his left eye is a little bit off. Easy enough to fix. All you gotta do is go in here to the morph tab, scroll down to head, eye, eyeball, and there's an eyeball height left. And in that case, that is his left eyeball. So you can just grab that and move it up. And now both of his eyeball positions match. So now we have a symmetrical Kevin with symmetrical eyeballs. Now. Speaking of morphs, since we're already in here, the exact same process we did with our goblin where, okay, yes, we're gonna start with a neutral base, or in this case, we're gonna start with a Kevin character. And maybe I didn't explain that enough. The reason we're starting with this Kevin character is because he has very nice expression wrinkles. He's from scan data. And there is a scan data workflow you can use with face tool. There's a whole section in their documentation under applications, so scan model workflows. You can go through and take uh, a scan data with a bunch of different expressions and project them so that when you're all done, all of that scan data will be applied to our different expression areas. And then it'll be a completely animated scan data face, just like Kevin here. So if you have scan data with different expressions, you can use that workflow with face tools. But like I said, he's got very nice expression wrinkles and he's got a very nice face texture. And I'm gonna use both of those to my advantage when we make our vampire creature. But in order to start making our vampire creature, I need uh, not Kevin's face basically. Now I can use face tools. It's basically gonna send this base mesh over to ZBrush. And just like in the previous series, I can sculpt on this uh, base mesh to create any character that I want. But while we're in character creator, there is a few things we can do. And again, going over here to the morph tab, if you scroll down, you can, in fact, if I click this head and I search for, Kevin, you're gonna see we're actually, Kevin's face is actually just a morph. So if I take this Kevin head and I, you, there's two things you can do. You can move this down to zero, or if you remember, you can double click and that'll switch between zero and a hundred, or in some cases, zero, 50 and a hundred, or zero, negative a hundred and positive a hundred, depending on the blend or the morph target. So you can see even his head is, is a morph shape. Same thing with this body. It's just a Kevin morph. So we can either go in here to full head. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this X so we can get rid of the Kevin search terms. We can go through here and we can 
change the morphs in here. You see, I got a bunch of morphs. If I go into my content morph pack, so underneath actor morph, there's ultimate morphs in here. That's a, uh, on the real illusion marketplace, a, a bunch of morphs that you can grab. Uh, so in here you can see, I can like do face thin and that'll go ahead and thin the face out. So these are, you know, useful morphs, uh, that you can use, uh, or you can go in here bit by bit and you can say, okay, underneath forehead, I can change the forehead width and go into brow. Again, you can do a search for depth if you want, or you can scroll down here and you can do a brow depth if you want. But remember, you can also go up here in your menu bar. There is a morph button. You can toggle this on. Just go ahead and turn that button on. And now you have uh, areas of the head that you can change. If I grab the ear, number one, you're going to see I can move the ear in and out. And then if I go up and down, it does a different uh, morph. So same thing on the body. You can grab a piece of the head and you can move it uh, in and out. And then again, up and down to make uh, different effects here. And while I'm doing that, you know, again, here's the ear section. It switches to the ear. If I scroll down, I can say, you know, ear elf, if you want. If you don't have in the ear elf option, you can just do this in ZBrush. It's not a huge deal. You can move these verse around super easy in ZBrush. So we're just gonna use this to kind of dial in the basic look of our character here. And you can spend as much or as little time in here as you want. We can do just kind of like an emaciated, sunken kind of face. And the other cool thing about face tools is not only can we send over the head and make head changes, we can also make changes to the teeth and to the eyes. We can poly paint all of this in ZBrush. And when we send it back to Character Creator, instead of going through the Substance Painter pipeline with like we did in the last series, it's going to go directly from ZBrush to Character Creator. It's going to bake under the hood in that sending back process and it's going to update in Character Creator. It's super fast, super easy. It's really exciting, so stick around. But at the end of the day, that's all we're doing with Kevin is just modifying his basic shapes. You know, you can modify the body if you'd like. But again, for this video, we're just gonna stick with the face for now, and then we're gonna send all of this over to ZBrush. Now, like I said, I am gonna be using this texture to my advantage. It's a very, very nice texture. If you want, there is a thing called skin gen in here. You can activate the skin gen editor and you can do all sorts of skin updates and pore details and paint and stuff like that. Uh, feel free to use that. I'm just gonna use Kevin's base texture here. And if we're ready to send this over, I'm gonna go over here, you know, obviously make sure Kevin is selected and let's talk about where face tools is. With a character loaded, that's important. If you don't have a character loaded, you know, face tools may not show up in here, but with a character loaded, you're gonna see we have face tools right here in our menu bar. We have face tools over here in our plugin, ZBrush face tools, face tools. That's that button, same button right here. And if we go to the modify panel underneath the attribute tab, if you scroll down, there's a face tools button in there. So any of those three buttons, feel free to select your character and send that over with face tools. If you've never used face tools before, it's going to give you this prompt. You want to add the face tools plugin to your ZBrush installation? Say yes. We're using ZBrush 2024. Uh, face tools is compatible with ZBrush 2022 and later. So I'm going to say OK. And now we're going to get this menu here. So I'm just going to start from the top. This is the action is create new. And this should look very familiar. If you're familiar with our last series where we're using Go Z. There's uh, create and then there's a relink and the exact same thing in face tools. We don't have a character sitting in ZBrush that we want to relink. We're starting fresh. So in this case, we want to create new. Uh, for subdivision here, that is it defaults to subdivision level six at a 2K texture resolution. If you remember in the previous series when we were working on the Goblin, that was split up into different UDIMs. So we got the head, the chest, the legs, the arms, those were all in separate UDIMs. When it says level six 2K texture resolution, that's not 2K for the entire body. That's 2K for just the head. Um, and subdivision level six in ZBrush, uh, we're going to be poly painting basically, and that is vertex color. So the more millions of polygons you have, the finer detailed your poly paint will be. And in this case, it'll be subdivided up to subdivision level six, which when we transfer that back to a texture, when we go from ZBrush to character creator, is gonna take your poly paint, your vertex color, bake it to a base texture that is gonna be 2K resolution because at subdivision level six, the head polygons, are dense enough to support a 2K or a 2048 texture map. In here, you can see we can bump this up to subdivision level seven and it'll send back, it'll have enough polygons to bake that poly paint down to a 4K resolution or a 4096 resolution texture. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with uh, subdivision level six with a 2K texture resolution. 
but you can go up to seven if you'd like. No higher than seven. There's no, there is no 8K option, for example. So any higher you go, then you can subdivide up as high as you want in ZBrush. It's still going to bake down to a 4K texture. Now, because we're in Create New, it's automatically going to create a mesh, uh, the diffuse map from your character, the default poly groups, which makes it very easy to control shift click the mouth and the mouth bag and the eye cavity and stuff and make it easier to kind of isolate features. And then normal details are like the little pore details and the little fine micro wrinkles. That is going to be sent over to ZBrush in a separate layer that you can, you know, activate and record and modify basically. But it's going to go over as a separate pass. So we'll go ahead and turn that on. Include wrinkles in poly paint. If we weren't going to modify his base texture that much, I would say turn this on. Because what that's going to do is, if you remember back in the previous video when we were looking at Kevin's wrinkles, when his brow up went up, it actually had, you know, very nice. It had a specific a normal map. It had a very specific color map. All of that will get sent over to ZBrush if you want. In our case, we're going to be changing the base so much. I'm going to make him really gaunt and sallow and, you know, kind of translucent skinned. So I'm, I don't want to include the wrinkles in my poly paint because what's going to happen is I'm going to make my very gaunt, sallow creature. And then when he does his forehead wrinkles, it's going to dial in the nice tan Kevin wrinkles. I don't want that. So in our specific case, I'm going to turn this off. In your case, you may want to leave that on. And then finally down here, we have all, none, set one, two, three, four. Again, these are the wrinkle sets. And again, in the documentation, it'll go over. These are the one, two, three, four wrinkle sets. They're not labeled one, two, three, and four. They're labeled one, one, two, two, and three. But these are all of the things we're going to, all the expressions that we can change in ZBrush that will be deconstructed back into a bunch of different shapes in Character Creator. So even though we're only really updating 13 blend shapes in ZBrush and the wrinkles, expression wrinkles that go along with them. It will bake those down to four basic wrinkle sets, and then those will be blended in based on which one of these expression sliders kicks in on your character. So in our case, I'm going to do all of this in one pass. You don't have, you certainly don't have to do this. If you're just working on a character and you're like, oh, you know what? I want to, I'm going to select none and I'm just going to go in and work on mouth frown. You can just go in and check on mouth frown. Send that over, work on mouth frown, just send mouth frown back and you're good to go. In our case, I'm going to work on all of this at once. So I'm going to go ahead and check on all. So again, we're creating new subdivision level six, 2K texture res, normal details going over in a separate uh, layer. We're going to work on all the expressions at once. And then I'm going to hit this go Z button. All right. And now we're in ZBrush. Uh, and so we've got all of our shapes. If you're like me and I record on a much larger monitor, than what I'm actually capturing. So I'm gonna to have to resize my window. For some reason, the face tools plugin kind of overrides my ZBrush window config, but just resize the window. We're in ZBrush now, and we're ready to start diving in deep to face tools. So in the next video, what we're gonna talk about is everything that goes on in the face tools plugin, all the changes we make, how we make them, how we update, not only the base face shape and make it into the creature that we want, but also apply or modify the poly paint, change the poly paint, go in and change all of the expression wrinkles that we want to modify, do poly painting on those expression wrinkles, and then finally send all of that data back to Character Creator.